When we think of National Socialism, we often associate that with the Nazi party rallies of the 1930s. We think of the row upon rows of tens of thousands of Nazi soldiers, the pomp and ceremony of the day, and of course, the speeches that Hitler gave. These were immortalized in Leni Riefenstahl's very famous Triumph des Willens or Triumph of the Will movie of 1934. However, what has come of these relics of the past? Well, I'm at Nuremberg at the moment, so let's have a look. This enormous edifice is the National Socialist Kongresshalle or Congress Hall. The foundation stones to this building were laid in 1935, although it was never finished. It has a seating capacity of 50,000 seats, a height of some 39 meters, although it was planned to go higher at 70 meters. And this, of course, is where all the Nazi party rallies occurred, not only inside the building, but also outside of the building. I have often talked about the use of architecture as a testament to power by the National Socialists here in Germany. And this Kongresshalle is of course a significant statement and it would have come at a significant material cost. Interestingly, this building is a U-shape which reminds us of the Norse uh, era. Uh, Stonehenge of course is a U-shape and this uh, sort of Nordic symbolism is very much enshrined within the Kongresshalle. This building is clad in solid granite, so this was an area where no expense was spared. Congress Hall looks like today and right in this spot here there would have been a pedestal or certainly one was planned where Hitler would have stood to address the 50,000 followers of National Socialism. Well at a diameter of 250 meters and the before said height of 39 meters this is a very impressive building indeed and how impressive would it have been at 70 meters high with the self-sustaining roof and here they would have come from all over Germany and the idea was of course to show a unified Germany. So here we are at the very outskirts of the Zeppelinfeld where all of the really large Nazi party rallies occurred in the 1930s. This of course was orchestrated and built by Hitler's architect Albert Speer. This is one of his very first construction projects if you like. And these towers here had a number of purposes. They were used for big cauldrons of fire bands of the Hitler Youth and of course the very famous Cathedral of Light where huge anti-aircraft lights and beams were placed at the vertical to create an enormous pillar of light at evening time. We're now walking within the very inner courtyard of the Zeppelinfeld here in Nuremberg. And we can see behind me is the very famous grandstand from which Hitler made a number of speeches. Now, in the 30s, this of course had uh, wings and the, the building would go out left and right of that grandstand area. Interestingly, the Zeppelinfeld is, is so named because in 1909, um, Ferdinand von Zeppelin landed one of his airships right here.
Hitler was personally intrinsically involved in the design aspect of this building and almost every major building in National Socialist Germany. And what can be seen quite clearly as one looks at this building or say the military academy in Vogelsang or even his own house at the Obersalzberg, there are lots of similarities. There was a kind of a standardized design uh, to his vision for National Socialist Germany. Well, with the Congress Hall behind me, of course, I'm now heading to the very mecca of this whole huge expansive rally ground, and that is the Luitpold Arena. And that's where we saw around 150,000 SS and SA soldiers gather for the very famous movie Triumph of the Will. So we're now crossing the Große Straße, or the Great Road, which is, of course, made of granite blocks. And like everything in uh, National Socialist Germany, it's bloody huge. This was, of course, designed and built uh, for massive military parades. And after the war, because of its grandeur and size, it was actually used as a temporary airfield. 59,999, 60,000, 60,000 granite stones were used for the Great Road. And these are not small bits of granite, 60,000. Okay, having just traversed the 1.5 kilometers of the Große Straße Parade Road, we're now entering the beginning of the Luitpold Arena, this massive parade ground. and. We can already see the steps here. These are places for dignitaries and uh, the crowds together as we enter this huge parade ground. Now, there's a very famous part in the film Triumph of the Will of 1934 of the Reichspartei Day. And that's where Victor Lutzer, the head of the SA, Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler, the three of them, walk through the Leupold Arena, which was, by the way, named after the Prince Regent of Bavaria. I'm walking in the exact same spot uh, as the three of them were in the movie, and I'm heading now towards the Ehrenhalle. And back then, in 1934, behind me, there were th three very large swastika banners, crescent-shaped stage, flanked by two massive National Socialist Eagles on either side and of course as the three of them were walking up to the Ehrenhalle in a ceremony to honor the fallen patriots of Germany they were flanked by somewhere between 150,000 and 200,000 uh, SS and SA soldiers. This is it. I'm walking the exact same route it's quite eerie I have to say. The parades are no longer. The standards of the National Socialists long rotted into the soil from which they came. The Thousand Year Reich prematurely ended after only 12 years. Hitler's gamble to attack the Soviet Union before Germany itself was attacked led to a multi front war rapidly depleting his nation's resources ending in Germany's total annihilation and humiliation.